This is the Audi S3 and this is what it does. Even the back seat, it has this um, indent. Yo! <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, this review is about to get lit. So I'll start with the exterior design, move into the interior. It's competition and we'll check out the cost of ownership as well which is actually worth the wait. Oh, and another thing, I'll let you in in a little secret on how Audi doesn't make ugly cars. Let's get to it. <laughs> Guys, name me one Audi car that looks ugly. I'll wait. In my books, they don't have any. None. Nada. Zero. I feel like Audi's designer's mantra is don't make ugly cars. That's as simple as that. And here's how they do it. They don't make drastic changes on new models. I mean, when you look at the S3, um, they did enough for it to be a new model, but then the changes aren't as drastic. It's still noticeable as the S3, just like Apple does with the iPhone. It's good because when you're owning the previous gen, you don't really feel like you have to get the new one. But then getting the new one doesn't really feel crazy as well because, I mean, it doesn't look um, crazy compared to the old one. So this car is like that as well. The previous S3 looks kind of like this one. The only drastic changes is the interior in which we'll get to it. So this car comes in eight colors, whereby seven of them don't cost any extra money except this one the daytona gray which clocks at 14k 14k for a paint that's 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 a lot now the design of the front fascia looks sculptured by a master craftsman it's an angular design that has a lot a lot of acute angles in which i feel like it's audi and vw's uh design language these days and that's actually that's actually nice and with this car it moves into the interior as well but we'll get into that in a few we have the matrix led headlights which are a must have if you ask me they can switch off some parts of it of the headlights so that they don't blind the oncoming cars but they come at a cost 7.5k to be specific and that's the theme of this car it has like a lot of optional extras i'll be taking you through it i'll tell you how much what costs and this car is basically specked out so the grill has this honeycomb design uh, which is nice and the s3 badge and the audi badge are blacked out which is part of the black appearance plus package which is gonna cost you 11k just to black out some badges 11k for that okay let's move on below the headlights we got these cool looking intakes which also have the honeycomb design and moving to the side profile this this car has like a different body line compared to the previous s3 this one is more freeform. It doesn't only have that one shoulder line like the previous Gen S3. This one has like some soft angles on the doors, on the lower part of the doors, and which is nice. It's okay. It's not really a big deal. And I mean, there's this body line here as well. Um, the shoulder line that runs from the headlight to the taillights in which it connects them. It's a cool, it's a cool look. It adds the dynamic look of this car. Even here on the side, there's some optional extras. If you look at the mirrors, they have the black housing. They're not the, the color of the car. And that's going to cost you 2,000 rands. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's expensive just to add the black housing and you pay 2K for that. So, I, that's that's a bit much. But why, what I like the most about this side profile are these 19-inch 5 double-spoke um, wheels, which cost 14K. Uh, these are the top of the range on the S3 which are obviously the most expensive ones. Moving to the rear, um, blacked out badges make an appearance here once more. And we have these two fake vents on the side, which have the honeycomb design as well, which I'm not the biggest fan of. However, there's two things that I love here at the back. The first one is the taillights. These lights are sequential and they look very cool at night. They do this mini light show when you unlock it, in which, yeah, it's a nice touch. 
And the second favorite is the tailpipes, the auxors. This is a real pipe, no fake surrounds. It's it's all real. It's it's a real thing. And they sound blissful. But unfortunately, you can't really rev it up to the red line as it has a soft limiter in which most new cars have it. But there's a reason behind that. I mean, you don't want to be putting unnecessarily stress on the engine. And that's what you're doing when you're just driving your engine. It's not going anywhere, not in motion. You're just putting stress in here. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons. And that's basically it with the exterior. Now let's get inside where you get welcomed by these Napaleta sports seats, which are an optional 21,000 Rand extra cost. These are automatic power seats, and guess how much you pay for that? For the power feature, the automatic power feature. Yeah, you got it wrong. You pay 11K. So it's 32,000 Rand spent on seats only when you're getting inside already. We're just starting. I don't know, guys, but then for me, hey, that's, that's too much. That's a lot. I mean, these seats are really nice. They're comfortable, well postured. They hold you in place during those like yeah, fun moments. <laughs> yeah, even the quilting on it, the, the pattern looks expensive. It reminds me of Bentley. It looks really nice. But then would you pay this much for seats? You even get the same uncompromised quality in the back seats. I mean, obviously, I mean, for the price, it's really a must. And talking about the back seats, this is really a comfortable place to be. The space is fair for a car this size. We have enough knee room for adults. The head space as well is really nice. You get luxuries such as an armrest, cup holders, a third zone of climate control, and two type C charging ports. And there's two isofix points for baby car seats. Well, it's three, including the front passenger seat. So you have three isofix points for a baby car seat. Now, the interesting part about this interior is the driver focused dashboard. This is an unusual design for a dashboard, but this layout actually reminds me of the BMW 3 Series E36. The placement of the driver events and the passenger events look similar to the one of the E36. Below that unusually mounted event, there's the infotainment screen, which is feature packed. There's anything and everything you'd want from an infotainment screen, from the navigation, which is all right. Oh, and the layout of the UI is really simple. It's just grid blocks. Everything is simple to locate, as you can see. This car has a couple of driver's assistance system, ranging from speed warning, adaptive cruise control, distance warning, presence, and the rest recommendation, which recommends that you take a break when you're on a long drive. Yeah, as I said, there's everything and anything you'd need from an infotainment screen. And there's this tactile sound it makes when you touch it. It's so satisfying. And directly under the infotainment screen, we have the climate control with physical buttons, which is nice. And under those, we have some few buttons as well, such as the drive select, which you can use when you want to change drive modes. And there's the traction control button. And there's the auto off on button. Okay, as you can see, the transmission tunnel looks a bit controversial, but then we'll get back to it after the digital gauge cluster. Now, to the gauge cluster, Audi calls this the virtual cockpit, and this is by far the best in the game. Nothing comes close. The customizability is crazy. You can basically put whatever you want, however you want it here. VW has a similar thing, but then it doesn't come close to this. This is by far the best gauge cluster I've ever used. So I actually thought that you can't change this display. You see, it's just analog vibes, like it's an old vibe. But you can, but they're not, oh, no, you can't change it when you change the drive select, as in like when you switch it to dynamic, that's basically the sport mode. You see, it's still the same. So for you to change that, it's, it's a bit of a first, but then you go to settings and actually let me go back. You see, you go to I mean, settings and then you go to display and brightness the Victor Visual, whatever, MMI. And then it's either F Performance. You can just change now. And then look at that. This looks nice. And then there's Dynamic as well, in which it's going to look like this. This is... 
and you can you can you can configure it to like put whatever you want as you can see here you can choose some things that you want to be there this is nice actually this is this is like i think audi has the best um um the cockpit the display here the digital um gauge cluster it's the best because you can customize it customize it to be however you want it moving on the steering wheel looks very nice every button looks nicely placed here it's perfectly placed and there's a star button which is customizable to do whatever you want it to do and we have the cruise control stick below the indicator stick and we have adaptive cruise control here which will cost you 5k and there's a storage compartment on the right side of the steering wheel and we have pedal shifters on the steering wheel as well and which is a nice touch but then i mean i'm not a biggest fan of because they're gonna upshift anyway it upshifts so it's basically still on auto as it is when you're not using pedal shifters now to the transmission tunnel this might be the one thing that i don't like about this interior this dinky shifter doesn't look like it belongs here i wouldn't mind if audi actually used the a4 gear knob that uh, this one this one ain't it chef i don't understand why they did it actually shifters like this are usually here to make more space but no space has been used here for anything else so yeah i don't i don't get it however moving on you can see the start engine button on the right and there's the one on the left that one is more interesting because it controls the infotainment system when you want to do a track skip without using the infotainment screen or the steering wheel so it does that and then it controls the volume as well you just do a swirly motion on it and it adjusts the volume and that's that's nice and another thing there's a wireless charger in front of it Oh, and one last thing about the interior is these door cards. These are interesting. We have an interesting take on the door handle, which looks like a gun. And as I said, this, this, this interior is very angular. Everything is just angles. No, actually, that was not the last thing. Um, the sound system, the stereo, the speakers that we have here, these are the B&O, the Bang & Olufsen premium sound system with a 3D sound. And for that, you're going to pay 8000 I think that's that's okay, actually. It's not really a match for, for this um, sound system. It really is good. Listen to this. Listen to this. We have the, the B&O. And another thing, we have the panoramic glass sunroof, which is going to set you back at 17,000 rands. That's, yeah. Everything in this car is an option, so, hey, it's, it's just too much. But then the sunroof, as you uh, you know, with VW products, not VW products, the VW group products, the sunroof is not going to disappoint. The sunroof is going to be big, just like this one. Okay, now, the most interesting part of this review, the performance. This car has a power output of 213 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque from the 2 liter 4 cylinder engine, sending it to all wheels through the Quattro system. But is it really true that this car possesses the almighty Quattro? The short answer is no. Um, but then, okay, let's let's go deeper into it. This car doesn't possess the Quattro system. Dow Audi markets it as the Quattro. This car is the Haldex system, which unlike the Quattro is not permanent all wheel drive. It predominantly sends the power to the front wheels and only sends it to the rear when it detects a slip in the front tires. Oh, even the RS3 uses this Haldex system, so for sure it's good enough. Okay, enough about that. This car is really fast and the 0 to 100 is claimed at 4.8 seconds and the exhaust sounds, man, this is nice. This is nice. Too much. This is. It popped. 
and these are the subtle ones it's not like ash pops and bangs i love this girl and this is good this is good and i mean it, it has enough room for your yeah. ego as well yeah <laughs> even the back seat it has this um indent yo <laughs> Yeah, this car is that nice okay okay done with the performance because we'll be here all day so um let's move on to the to the comparison between this and its main competitors i made this illustration to compare them we have the bmw 235i and we have the mercedes-benz a35 uh the sedan so when we look at the price the s3 is significantly less expensive not cheap but less expensive and less powerful compared to these two but the performance is so close it's only a tenth of a second slower from 0 to 100 and the top speed is limited to 250 kilometers per hour on all of them so the competition is really tight and lastly the cost of ownership this car is a base price of 921,000 rands for the hatch and for this one in which is the sedan it's 943 and 800 rands so we'll use this car's price and i'll try to match every single spec on this one so we get uh, a close enough representation so matching this car spec for spec it goes up to 1 million and 141 thousand rands so that's 197 thousand uh, worth of extras and with that money you can can buy a brand new uh, Suzuki Expresso and you'd still be left with change at 13,600 rands change and that's enough money for full tanks for the for the Expresso for the whole year imagine okay it's fine let's break down the monthly installments so with no deposit at 12% interest over six years you'll be paying 22,405 rands monthly Airing fuel at an estimate of 1.8 per month and insurance at 3,700 rands. We'd be looking at a monthly total of 27,905 rands and it would go down to 25,148 total with 10% deposit since the monthly installment would go down. So yeah, there's no need for me to say more. I mean, for this one, I think you gotta be at least making 80k a month um, to afford it. So yeah and what's my verdict on it is it worth the price is it is it a good car so um with me this is a perfect car if you're looking for a compact sports car i'd say do some test drive and compare it with the 835 the 235 as well and see i mean and going for this wouldn't be a bad idea also yeah <laughs>